Moses, congratulations on a hard fought and yet at times less than dazzling boxing match. Oh, come on, Gary. You stepped into the ring and once again did exceptionally well tonight. Thank you. Thank you. It was a hard fought victory. Although he did seem to hurt you in the ninth round. I can explain. And yet you can hear from the crowd. Yes, yes. Thank you, Houston. And give it up for my hometown girl, Megan the Stallion. Now she owns her masters. They're just not fully satisfied with what they saw in you tonight. Oh, come on, Gary. I just went 12 rounds. Why you gotta be like this? Please, let me just get out the first question, okay? What do you say to the fans here at home and who thought, and what do you say to the fans here and at home who thought that you were once again, not fighting, but you were at infinitum dancing in the square circle? Well, first of all, Gary, I, I want to thank my higher power, my promoters, Bob King and Don Arm. But without them, all things are possible. So thanks be to them, they, he, she, her, he, whatever your pronouns is tonight. Thank you for showing up. And to my team, my family, we got each other's backs. So come on, Gary, let, let's restart this interview. What's the question? In the past, as a younger, hungrier fighter, you showed over and over again that you were willing to mix it up had the will to get into a fight. That's right. You were willing to risk it all with your, your exciting brand of pugilism. Still do, still do. Moses, you navigate the ring in a way that both physically and mentally no one else does. Amen. So there is no disputing that you're a superstar talent beyond imagination. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. But what we saw tonight, to be honest with you, was an embarrassment of that talent and a betrayal of what we've come to rely on from you. Barely, Gary. Really? Why you gotta dull my shine? Did, did you just get here? Moses, I've been here since the undercards, okay? Well, you wasn't here watching the fight. I was just in. Are you really gonna call this a legitimate boxing match and try to pass it off as such? Or are you willing to give every single fan their money back? That's the question. Gary, you're not gonna, I'm not gonna let you do this to me. I'm not gonna step into that trap. I'm not stepping into that trap. Trap? What trap is that? What, what, what are you talking about, Moses? Gary, you, you know what I'm talking about. You do this every time we have an interview. You get in me and, and you know what you're doing, and I'm not letting you do this this time. I get in you? What do I do? You know damn well what you do. I'm at a loss for words. Oh, that would be a first pleasant for you, Gary. Oh, well, why don't, you, why don't I just repeat the question? Why don't you not? Why don't you not? I just did 12 rounds of a beautiful boxing match, and sometimes being interviewed by you, Gary, is more fatiguing than the fight. Did you say intriguing, Moses? Nah, you heard me. I said fatiguing. Moses, I'd really like to understand, and maybe uh, maybe this is for a different time. Maybe we could do this right here, but I really would like to understand what it is I do that makes you feel like I trapped you. <laughs> Gary, I I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. We're not going to do this in private. We're going to do this in front of everybody. We're, going, we're not doing this in private. Okay, okay. Then, then let's do this right now. Okay. Let's, let, so listen well, Gary. I'm not going to allow you to draw joy over another black person's pain, loss, or failure anymore. What? Draw joy from black pain? You heard me. Your romance with our suffering is worn out. Tupac got shot, we got shot, and all you people got romantic. Moses, what? No matter where I fight, who I fight, or how I fight, you talk about the worst of what I do in there, Gary. You talk about the worst what the black man does. And gone are the days where people like you, white people like you, White people like me. So-called established whites like yourself who continue to express that joy over happiness and happiness over black suffering. Yeah, where do we go from this? Gone are the days of Billie Holiday's abuse being reported on while uppercut whites just sit back with a glass of Sauvignon Blanc, chilling to her pain, her black pain, listening to her, her music being amplified and under high fidelity turntables. We're not doing that no more, Barry. Billie Holiday? Billie Holiday, Ray Charles, do our bums on the corner. The list goes on. Being beaten by your police and being bitten by your police dogs. My police? My dogs? Your dogs, Gary, yes, they don't bite you. They don't beat you. I don't have to listen to this. This isn't a post-fight boxing interview. You're right. This is a long overdue reckoning. My black misery is not here for your white ass to celebrate no more, Gary. You elevate me so you can desecrate me and disintegrate me, Gary. Now, hold on, Moses. I beg to differ on my behalf. Go on, Gary, differ. Go ahead, differ with your bad self. Differ for us. You can differ all day. Let's see you differ. There is a photo of myself and Ella Fitzgerald. I don't know if you know who Ella is. I sure do. What type of question is that? 
It's a photo framed in my office of her and I in a triumphant moment of humanity at one of her shows back in the day when she wasn't even allowed to. If I hear another crusty old Caucasian like yourself tell me how they love to hear Miss Fitzgerald when she sung in front of an old white audience, when she was led through the back door, the service door, I'm gonna lose my mind. What I'm trying to point out to you, Moses, is that in that photo, we are celebrating our service to our fellow human beings. But I'm telling you, you don't get to gas people with your well-practiced sympathies as a COVID method no more. And you don't get to create a bad black man out of me, Gary. Not having it tonight. My night. I've been in a fight game for years, Moses, before you were born. <laughs> I know, Gary. I know you're ancient, Gary. You're ancient, and so is your mind thinking. I don't need to verify in front of you or anyone. No, you don't, Gary. You, you really don't. And the only reason I'm standing here is to school you. School me? I'm a grown man, Moses. Yes, Gary, you are. You are a grown man. And I want you to man up right now. Man up? Man up, Gary. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me, Gary. I know you listening. And I know you know where I'm coming from. Now, I want to know is, what do you understand as a man? Okay, you, you want to you wanna hear what I understand. Go on, Gary. Go on. Tell it. Preach. Well, I have been watching black fighters for decades, and there is a certain sweetness to seeing black fighters succeed when the odds are so stacked against them. And I do get excited and, and a sense of more happiness over that fighter's success because of all the tragedy black people, black people have been through. I get excited. So we get a little personal, right, Gary? As personal as we can be in front of 70,000 people. So how do you feel about getting aroused like that, Gary? Aroused? Yes! You said that you get excited, turned on by black horror. You get emotionally aroused, and I'm telling you, that stops tonight. What stops, Moses? You being more compelled by black success than white success. Stop that, Gary. I'm telling you now, my people's torment is ain't yours to marvel at. But I, I'm listening. Your people set up a system designed to destroy us every minute of the day, and you never have to face the minute to minute the way we do. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So I ain't letting you create another bad black man in the ring tonight, Gary. You ain't allowed to create more black obscenities for your own satisfaction no more. Masturbating to our tribulations. Masturbating to our tribulations? Yes, Gary, to our entire existence. We ain't a fucking sideshow at a carnival. That ends tonight. Excuse my cursing. Oh, Moses, can I get a word in, please? It depends on what you guys say, Gary. But hey, it's your show, right? Go ahead. Get a word in. I want to repeat again publicly, Moses, that I do get a different feel, and this is my first time acknowledging that fact consciously. And that realization just happened here in the ring because of you. So I am compelled to thank you. Blessings. I do have a different feeling when I watch a black man fighting in the ring. That's a tragedy to me, Gary. I see the tragedy for what it is now. <laughs> what do you see, Gary? What I see for me as a white person is that I do enjoy the catastrophic experience of being black. Damn, truth, Gary, truth. It's not like I want to see black people hurt. However, when you are hurting, we do celebrate your pain with Grammys, with Oscars, Olympic medals, with all kinds of awards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where my, where my belt's at? Where my belt's at? All right, cool. Hold on to him. Hold on to him. And when you do celebrate us, Gary, you ain't helping. Agreed, Moses. It keeps us from getting into the fight with you. The fight? The fight for equality and humanity, Moses. Are you spinning some serious truths now, Gary? Facts. Facts. We can't be spectators anymore. Yes, Gary. My man. My man. I, I appreciate you more than you know. And I appreciate you too, Moses. It's always enlightening, albeit frustrating, to talk with you. So... Why don't we get back to the fight? Let's do that, yes. The ninth round, if we can, finish this interview where we start. All right, well, I'll tell you this, Gary. He caught me in the corner in the ninth round, and I did get hurt. I don't like to admit it, but I did get hurt. Uh, by the 10th, I spent the 10th and 11th round on this fucking planet. Excuse my cursing. I was holding on for dear life, but by the 12th round, I, I just, I fully recovered. I felt refreshed like it was the first round. And that's why I kicked his ass in the last round to close the show. I, I was hoping the judges would catch that momentum in the end. That, that, that is a surprisingly honest and fair summation of those rounds. I appreciate, appreciate your authenticity, Moses. We don't see eye to eye all the time, and I have to thank you for putting me out here like this on the spot. I feel revitalized, much like you, like, like it's round one. I feel like I've had a come to Moses moment, and I'm fresh. 
And I look forward to showing you what I do going forward. Gary, only your actions will tell us that. I'm going to leave you with this one quote, Gary. Oh, boy. Who from Megan the Stallion? <laughs> nah, it's from the Bible. You may know it. I'm not sure if you do. Well, it depends on which book you're quoting from, Moses. <laughs> it's the old school book. It's about admiring and desiring. Exodus 20, verse 17. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet thy neighbor's wife. You shall not covet thy neighbor's male servant or his female servant or his ox or his ass or anything that belongs to thy neighbor. And you, Gary, shall not covet thy black neighbor's existence no more. Ain't got nothing to do for you no more. So good night, Gary. And good night to all my fans. Praise be to Bob King and Don Earl. And Megan the Stallion. Now she owns her masters. I'm that, yeah. Been that, still that. Will forever be that, forever be that. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm the hood, Mona Lisa, breaking good in the pieces. Had to egg some cheesy niggas out my circle like a pizza. I'm way too exclusive, I don't shop on Insta boutiques. All them little clothes only fit fake booties. Bad, bad, bill talking cash.